Hi, this is Kevin with Let Me Tech You. And in this video, we're going to talk about querying data sources using Terraform. Uh, there's many reasons why you would want to query some data, uh, well, query data sources um, for different types of, uh, um, you know, different types of ways to make your code a lot more dynamic. For example, on the AWS side, a couple of different reasons I could think of would be say you're trying to find the availability zones in that particular region, um, instead of listing them out, you could query it. That way your code could be more agnostic to being deployed in other regions because when you say deploy a VM again or VPC, um, your availability zones will match the region that you're deploying it in. Um, and also some AMIs can be region and, um, you know, dependent. And then on the Azure side, you know, say for instance, you have resource groups in Azure that are already created and you want to deploy some resources to it, but you don't want to import those in for various reasons. You could utilize data sources to um, do all that stuff for you. And that's what we're going to do in this video is we're going to create a, uh, use a module. The, let me pull it up here. So I'm going to use the Azure VNet module. So basically modules are just ways to deep, uh, deploy code without having to, you know, repeat the um, steps, everything that's in there. As you can see, there's some different examples, some of the outputs, stuff like that. So instead of you having to actually create an entire VNet yourself, you can basically just put, um, add some inputs to then basically just build out an entire VNet. And that's what we're going to do. And we're going to add this inside of a current resource group that I have deployed in Azure, but it's not in Terraform. And we're going to have to find, we're going to use what's called a data source to query that name, that resource group name to then inject it into the, the uh, Azure module. So I'm going to come here and so I want to copy to use a module. You basically just copy these and provisioning instructions. And I'm going to paste this right there. So there's three required variables and those will be listed here. So we need resource group name. Take this out here. We need use for each. And this is if we want to create multiples and then VNet location. So this is the location of the VNet. So to then um, go back to my last point, data sources are, so to create a resource group, we would initially do this. So like, let's say we want to put this in an actual resource group, you know, create a new one, throw it in there with it. We would do this. Azure would know, or Terraform would know, like, hey, the resource group needs to be um, uh, deployed first, and then you can go forth and um, query it, or, well, you we wouldn't need the data source at that point. We would just call it from the code to use that. So that would kind of, that's actually part of my next, you know, um, statement is what's called uh, using like a depends on. So, you know, there's, you know, actually, I'll get into that in the next video. Let's just stay, stay the course on this part. So once we have this data source here, we'll copy this here. And the only thing you need is the name. That's the only required argument. Um, and then there's some other attribute references um, that are exported down here, such as the ID, location, and tags. So the location we'll need to be able to get the, put the VNet in the correct location. So some people usually put data sources in different um, files, like a data.tf file, but I'm gonna add this here. I'm just gonna call this main. This can be anything. And then this needs to be the name of the resource group that you're deploying in. So then down here, uh, what we'll need to do is do a data that dot Azure RM dot resource dot group dot main, and then we need the name. For this, we'll just equals false, or let's do true. And then for the location, we're going to use the data block again dot location. So 
to initialize the uh, resource group, you need to do a Terraform init, I mean, not the resource group, the module. You need to initialize it so that the module and its dependencies get downloaded. Um, and then as far as the plan, so we'll do this. This will just kind of, um, you know, uh, plan out what's going to be either applied, destroyed, updated. And typically, you know, in a, in a development environment, I usually do like the auto approve because most of the time I don't want to have to wait for this and then do the apply. So I'll just do Terraform apply dash auto approve. And then that way it's actually going to deploy these four resources. So my VNet, um, subnets, so I got net and three subnets that are being deployed. And as you can see, it's going inside the TF state resource group. Resource group TF state. Uh, we should have a location. Yeah, location is East US. So it went through essentially the plan phase again. Now it's going through the apply. And then if we go into the of state should start seeing some V nuts coming in here. Sometimes it's a little delayed in terms of what it actually shows in here. There we go. So we have the V net now this, this entire, um, uh, resource group isn't deployed in Terraform, but we can still manage resources within it by using the data block. And then once we're done, we'll just go ahead and destroy it. And then that'll leave us back with just our resource group. Um, since it won't touch that since it's not inside of state. So as far as that goes, uh, you know, that's basically the reasoning behind re data sources. You'll typically find data sources for various other um, re, uh, various other resources as well. So there could be various types of automation and things you'll want to do as far as extrapolating data from your environment to be used. Um, you know, with like doing things like outputs and stuff like that. So if you have any questions in regards to this video, drop me a comment down below. I'll be sure to get back with you. Again. Uh, check out my site, letmetechyou.com, um, for any further guides on Terraform. Or if you have any questions or ideas, also leave me a comment down below, and I'll be sure to get back with you. Again, thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you next time.